In this video, I am going to provide you with a couple of different examples on how you can build a triple cantilevered floor for a deck above a room, home addition, something like that. Now, the individual who contacted me and wanted this uh, drawing, I'm going to kind of point out a couple of things that uh, might make sense to them. And again, this is actually what they're doing. They're building a deck and they wanted to go out 24 inches. And they're going to have a handrail that comes around. It's, the handrail is basically going to sit on top of the perimeter of the exterior wall, not going to go all the way to the end. So in this example here, I have a 12 inch overhang on this side and a 24 inch overhang on this side. If I wanted to go out a little further, I just need to bring this um, support beam or doubler back and then make sure that I have the cantilever rule that, that is a basically a one to a two um, or a one to a three ratio. It's going to stick out one part and go back two parts. It's going to stick out a foot. It's got to go back two feet. So here I have it sticking out 12 inches and it's going back about, uh, I want to say about 16 inches. I didn't quite go because this was going to be a non load bearing support out here. So here we just have it. I just switched the direction on the joist around the perimeter and we have hangers here supporting it. Kind of self-explanatory. The long joists here are supporting this cantilever here. And then when we get to here, the um, support is being, uh, or the support over here is going to be from the cantilever joist on this side. And we could have a little weak spot here. This could be a, um, this is always a problem area to, um, for structural engineers. So um, keep that in mind. It's going to be the weakest part of this structure until, of course, we get to the last example in the video. And uh, that's going to be the most heavy duty structure that I could imagine using the materials in these examples. So let's just go ahead and take the fascia board off and just kind of go around, get an idea what we're doing here. We have the blocking, the joist and the hanger space 16 inches on center. We obviously wouldn't need a hanger here. It'd be sitting on top of the wall and the joist. And I also want to point out that this system here. Um, you can use a ledger. It doesn't need to sit on top of a wall. So when you are going to um, just take this whole framed system, you could shove it up against a house and get rid of this wall and then put a ledger on there to, uh, or even a beam, something like that uh, might work. So just kind of throwing that out there. You don't need to build a structure like this with four walls. This could be something that you could use and uh, attach it to a building like a home addition. Now this design might not require a wall or a ledger underneath this side since the weight of the joist is going to be transferred to these two outer walls. So we can see here where this wall right here wouldn't be, it would be a non-bearing wall. These would be load-bearing walls where before the joists were switched they were running perpendicular to here. They were sitting on top of this wall. This was a load bearing wall and this one here would have been a load bearing wall. And in this case, we have three load bearing walls and we might actually need some type of a support post underneath the doubler here or if this was going to be a beam. So we do have a two foot overhang all the way around the perimeter on this one. And this is what the individual is actually looking for who gave me the uh, who sent the original question to me. So again, 24 inches. And we have a weak spot here. And this might not be a big deal. Like I said, if the handrail is going to be in here, something like this might be a big deal. If it was, if you're going to be standing here and the handrail is going to go around the perimeter or even, or even attached to the front of the fascia board. Now this design is going to be a little stronger than the last one. But we're still going to have a problem. This could be a weak spot here structurally, this area here. Uh, again, this won't be a problem if you, or I don't think it's going to be a problem. If, you're, if your guard railing is going to go around the perimeter two feet from the outside. And for those of you wondering, why would anybody do that? Why not make the deck larger um, and go um, all the way out? 
Well, the individual who sent me this question had a different design idea and his railing was going to go on the inside there. So just throwing that out there, we all have different uh, design ideas to what's going to work. So again, if the handrail is going to the outside, might not this design might not might not be as effective as this one where we change the get rid of the blocking here or the joist that we're running in the opposite direction and then run a full length joist across here. And you're probably wondering, why not just do this? Why did I show the other example? I showed the other example just to give you an idea of how much better something like this would be. So here we have the beam cantilevering out past the edge of the wall. And it's going to be supporting the floor with a joist that is being picked up at the other end from a cantilevered beam here that is attached to this. So we have a, a cantilever here that is supporting a structural beam that is also cantilevering across here and it's picking up the weight. So the weight from this joist is getting transferred to this beam and on the opposite side getting transferred to this beam here. So this one here is probably going to be one of the better ideas, um, something that will work just fine for a situation like this unless there's going to be a lot more weight on the um, outside of the fascia board here. And if that's the case, you could always install a beam. So here we would basically have a beam coming across instead of a joist. And I have a spacer block in here, um, which where you could nail the spacer block to the beam and then nail the fascia board to the spacer block to make it stronger. But you could always get rid of this use an inverted hanger or a concealed hanger and then move the beam out to the edge here and then the beam would be right up against the fascia board you could just nail the fascia board into the beam that way you would have a nice solid perimeter here so i hope that makes sense this isn't uh, rocket science but i do realize i looked for this i couldn't find anything on the internet on how to build this and i did do another video and I'll put a link here to that for a um, corner um, cantilever deck that I actually came across on uh, while driving around um, my area they were building a project so the the corner one that I have was something I saw it was engineered um, and something that's probably going to be something that would work um, in your area because a structural engineer had it in our area. And I'm in Southern California and uh, you know I don't deal with any snow loads. If you have a situation like this and you have snow, uh, your, your local building departments might say, absolutely not, no way are you gonna be building something like this, just gonna be too much weight on this structure. So hope it helps. If it does, you know what to do, hit the thumbs up button.